Good morning and happy Friday. This is Denise from Counseling for Quality Living. And today's talking point is going to be about our quality world and quality world pictures. Several of my clients asked me to um, talk a little bit about that in a video form that they could um, watch a few times and take some notes. So here we go. From birth to death, we create and build in our heads pictures of our quality world. We build this and then we spend the rest of our lives, actually, trying to bring our quality world pictures into fulfillment. Because the extent to which our quality world pictures are met, not in our heads, but in the real world, is the extent to which we will find contentment and happiness in our lives. So what are our quality world pictures? Our quality world pictures consist of people, places, things, and beliefs, core beliefs. People that we wish to be in relationship with. In most everyone's quality world, there are family members, friends, perhaps historical figures that you um, value, that you look up to and take lessons from, places. For many of us, it would be our home. For others, the beach. For others, the mountains. For others, perhaps a particular country maybe a country that our ancestors are from or a place that we traveled to that we truly loved. We have things in our quality world. We put things in our quality world. For some, it's a car. For some, it's a house. For some, it's a pet. For some, it is a particular piece of jewelry. Um, for some, it could be your job your career, your volunteer work. And then we put, as we evolve and grow through our lives, we put belief systems and core beliefs and values in our quality world. Some of us <clears throat> put a particular organized religion in our quality world. Some put political beliefs that we may have in our quality world. Um, some people have particular traits like honesty or faithfulness or compassion, empathy in our quality world. But when we put something in our quality world, it means that without even thinking about it, we measure what we are getting or seeing in the real world to what we have in our quality world, which is up here. And remember, we think in pictures, but we talk with words. So these pictures are always there. And we use our quality world pictures as a measuring stick. We evaluate what we're getting in the real world to what's in our quality world. And depending on how close the real world comes to meeting our quality world pictures, that determines how balanced our scales are. And when our scales are pretty much in balance, when the real world matches pretty well to what's in our quality world, our scales are balanced and we're feeling good. We're content. 
But when what we are experiencing or seeing or hearing in the real world is out of sync with what's in our quality world, our scales tilt. And that causes frustration. And so what we do is we behave, we do something to try to bring those scales back into a better balance so that we can feel better. So here is a very concrete example. In my quality world, I have a Pittsburgh medium rare steak. I love it. And so, let's pretend that you and I are going out to dinner. And you order your meal and I order mine. And mine consists of a steak that I have asked to be prepared medium rare. So the meals come. And the server puts my steak in front of me. I am immediately, without even thinking about it, consciously, I am comparing that steak that I have in my quality world to the one that's in the real world on my plate. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to smell it. I'm going to poke it a little bit. Then I'm going to cut it. Look at the inside. The whole time I'm evaluating. How close is this steak on my plate to the one that I have in my quality world? I'm going to taste it. If the steak on my plate pretty well matches the one I have in my quality world, my scales are in balance and I am enjoying a wonderful meal. But if the steak on my plate falls short, of the steak that I have in my quality world, my scales are gonna tilt. And I'm going to do something. I'm gonna behave in some way to try to bring those scales back into balance. What are some things I might do? I could quietly call the server over and say, this is really not medium rare, could you please take it back and ask the chef to cook it a little more or give me another one. I could do nothing. I could sit and suffer in silence and eat it and just not like it. I could lean over and whisper to you, my dinner partner, and say, this is not a good steak and I don't think I'm going to come back here again. Or I could scream, get over here, this is horrible, take this away. We have a myriad of ways that we try to bring our scales into balance and some are more effective than others. But when our scales are out of balance, we are going to do something to try and bring them back into balance. As counselors, when we are meeting with clients, especially in the beginning sessions, one of the first things that we explore is their quality world. I need to know, as the therapist, what your quality world looks like. Because if you or I or anyone is experiencing some level of discontent or unhappiness, we can be assured that there are some quality world pictures that are not being met in the real world. It could be a relationship with a family member. You have this picture of family or this picture of this person in your quality world and you're not having success with that person in the real world. 
there has to be some disconnect with quality world pictures and your basic needs if you're feeling discontent and unhappiness in your life. And when we identify which quality world pictures are not being met and work to find ways to make them better or fix them if we can, then we bring our scales closer into balance and therefore our level of happiness and contentment comes up. One thing that I find, especially in many of the women clients that I have, is that we often do not put ourselves in our own quality world. Somewhere along the way, we've adopted the belief that to put self in the forefront is selfish. Well, I would say that it's okay to be selfish sometimes, especially when you know that you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. Because if the self is suffering and weak and unfed, you don't have a lot to give to those other people that you care about. So I would ask you to think about, are you in your own quality world? And the things, the people, the places, the things, and the beliefs that we have in our quality world are things that we give value to. And our quality world is not only directly connected to our level of happiness and contentment, but our quality world helps to form the emotions, the signals that we feel each and every day. When the real world is not matching what we have in our quality world, if I have a picture of um, a, a picture of myself in a counseling situation where I am able to help people live, build, nurture, and find better relationships, if I have that picture in my mind, which I do, but what I see in the real world is I'm not making a difference. I'm not being helpful to others. My practice is not thriving. My suggestions are not making a difference, a positive difference. Then my scales are going to be way out of balance. And hopefully what I would do to help them bring become closer uh, into balance would be to maybe study some more, maybe talk to some of my mentors, maybe do some self-evaluation to figure out what is it that I need to be doing differently in order to be more successful with my clients. But our quality world and our emotions are closely linked and we can use our emotions as signals that perhaps something isn't quite right, perhaps something needs to change, or on a good note, perhaps there's a good feeling that I want more of. And I identify, oh, this is what brings on those great feelings. And these are the things that I want to do more of or do more often. So, when we have these quality world pictures, especially those that we have developed 
and carried with us for a long time. Very often, I said that we use our quality world pictures as a measuring stick, but we also form expectations based on our quality world pictures. And very often, when we have expectations, they become our next resentment. If I have a picture of how my son or my daughter should treat me in my quality world, and the way that they're treating me in the real world does not match that, of course my scales are out of balance. But sometimes it is the expectation that we have in our head that we need to let go of. And I hate to use the term lower your expectations, but in reality, sometimes that's what we need to do because very often our expectations are bringing us or causing us misery. When we expect something that we don't get, it doesn't feel good. So perhaps we could look at some of our expectations, which are based on the quality world pictures we have in our mind, and evaluate, am I expecting too much? Am I expecting something from this person, or this job, or this meal, or this place that I'm not going to get? yet I continue in my habit mind to keep expecting and therefore keep getting disappointed. I guess it's the ultimate reality check. You know, we very often write a script in our heads for people's lives and then we get very disappointed and upset when they don't follow the script. But remember one of the basic premises of choice theory is that we can only control our own behavior and not the behavior of others, nor do we always know what is best for other people. But we still tend to write that script. We write it for our husbands, for our children, for our bosses, for our coworkers. And when people don't follow the script that we have in our head, we get very disappointed. So we need to be careful of our expectations. <clears throat> Another thing, a lot of times we keep our expectations in our heads. We never verbalize them. And then we're upset when our expectations aren't met by others or by situations. So that's another thing we might want to reflect on is do I have expectations that I don't share? And therefore that would make it very difficult for people to meet our expectations if they don't even know what those expectations are. especially people that we want to be in good relationship with. So, in a nutshell, we have in our mind pictures, we think in pictures, of people, places, things, and beliefs that we have collected and stored, that we value, and that we use as a measuring stick to what we are getting in the real world. And the extent to which our quality world pictures and the real world are balanced is the extent to which we will find happiness and contentment about any given thing on any given day. Some of the questions we can ask ourselves: First of all, do you know what's in your quality world? And if you do, do you know what's 
missing, what isn't being met in the real world that is causing your scales to be out of balance? And if so, what can you do? What effective thing can you do or things to bring the scales back into balance? You might want to ask yourself, am I in my own quality world? Do I make time for myself? Am I patient with myself? Am I loving with myself? Do I take care of myself? Do I listen to myself, to my feelings, and to my thoughts? We might want to think about our expectations. Are my expectations causing me a great deal of resentments and misery? Am I expecting things of people, places, or things that are unrealistic? And if I have expectations, have I verbalized them? Or am I keeping them in my head and assuming that people can read my mind? Given some time to reflect on these things can help us find our own solutions to better living, more quality in our life, and more happiness. Because it really is about quality living. So spend some time if you can, thinking about your quality world. Have a great day.